All right, we're rolling. Okay. How do you hope? How do you hope? Uh, okay, well, it is, it's December. It is. It's December. It wow. is Christmas it's officially time. December. Is it, uh, no, it's not time? Christmas yet. It's not Christmas yet. Well, it's, no. tis the season to be shopping. That is true. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Actually, I'm done with my shopping, so. Cha-ching. I don't even know what everybody wants. I think I'm done with my shopping. I think, I think I'm think done I'm with done. my shopping. I think I think I'm just going to say fuck you all. Who, if you don't get a gift, you're not getting anything at this point. That's what I do. I've got That's so it. few I'm done. people to shop for. It's like I got mom and my sister that I, you know, am not done with yet. Uh huh. But otherwise, I'm done with my nephew and my brother-in-law. Okay. Well, we did Secret Santa for his family this year, and I think that's the way to go. I liked that. Yes, I just, like it very much. Just one gift, and that's one it. gift. That's it. Oh, but you should see the slew of stuff my mom bought her grandson. Well, that's that's grandma's right. Yes, I know. Because yeah. we did Secret Santa, but the kids are still getting showered with presents. Oh. Well, one of the oldest one was very good, and she took part in Secret Santa, and well, she geez. willingly said that she would take one present. She's still going to get showered and gifts. Yeah, she is, but she should. Because that was a nice thing to do. Yeah, that was. That, no. I just wanted to bring something nice to the show for once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, with today's topic, you, you, we kind of want to start off on a good foot. Yeah. Like, my, my You're nephew... you start off on a good foot and then eat it? <laughs> yeah, well, you know... Ha-ha. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that's... Um, <laughs> Uh, I, we wanted to cover this. We're so so. We'll just move into it then, huh? We'll, we'll move right well, into he's going to say something Mama. nice about his nephew, and then you just oh got him yeah, were yeah. you? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I, no, I you, we were just well, starting. Go ahead, my, you do my, that. Then. My nephew is oh, okay, going to be getting okay. showered by uh, with gifts. Gotcha. He he's into cars, oh. and uh, my mom got him a car a shit, already. A yeah. shit ton <laughs> of fucking Hot Wheels oh. and track. And a mega city and a wow. garage and this and that. And she's like, I bought all of this, but I think I bought too much. So I have to decide. And then, and I'm like, Ma, just, just, just give just him give everything. Because otherwise it's going to sit in your house in mm. packages. Because it's going to end up in your house anyway, because it's grandma. So grandma's going to keep some of it here for when he comes over. Correct. But at least it's not in packages. <laughs> at least you can now throw it into a smaller box. And, and I'm like, you. If we're going to return any of it to Toys R Us... Oh, she's not returning any of it. No, I know that. that. It's never going to happen. Well, his birthday, he has a birthday next year, so... (laughs) He has a birthday in August. Doesn't matter. Grandma will hold it. And you know she will. No, I know that. But (laughs) I have no tolerance for any of that. Nope. Let's just buy new shit for the birthday, because we don't know what he's going to be into. Because right now he's three. Yeah. Oh, okay, so his Things his change pretty his quick. tastes are going to change in about a week. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, that's let's just give him downstairs. everything now. If not, let's go back to Toys R Us and return it. Yeah, that's how the four year old is downstairs. You never know what to get her because, oh, she loves she loved Paw Patrol a month ago. Yeah. Now she wants the baby alive. Mm-hmm. Like I said, next week, God knows what she wants. By the time Christmas gets here, she may forget the baby alive exists. It may not even exist in her world anymore, and we need something entirely different to make her well, happy. Well, we, we, we learned that for her birthday, uh, her father watches Walking Dead. Oh, that and was And we asked what she wanted for her birthday, and she decided she wanted Walking Dead for her birthday. Oh, my God. <laughs> so well, she, doesn't being, watch, she doesn't watch Walking Dead. She doesn't Dead. watch Walking Dead. She doesn't watch it. Uh, yeah, just but that she, daddy it, watches Walking <laughs> Dead. Yes, but just Walking Dead in general. I know it's got action figures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and they're kind of... Crappy, but yeah. Well, um, yeah, but whatever. That doesn't doesn't matter. But that's what, just yeah. in general, buying a kid, you know, Walking Dead action figures or zombie figures, yeah, because there's all sorts of zombie figures. But just buying a kid zombie figures, I mean, I do it all the time. What are you trying to say? For you? No, no. You, you buy, well, the point is, I got I got our, the the oldest one when she was growing up. I got her a dismember me zombie. Yep, that was that was good. It's literally a zombie where you figure out where all the, zombie, the, all the body parts go. Zombie, the all the body by putting them back where they belong. I got her zombie bowling one year. I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know they bring, they're bringing muscle men back. Really? Yeah the 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 little pink muscle men. Yeah. With the wrestling. Uh huh. Yeah. 
they're bringing them back, but in different forms. Like, so He Man, uh-huh. Muscle Men, um. Aliens, or Alien, you know, gotcha. Chest Buster, so and everything. Branded like. versions of them. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. So, so with the birthday here, but she oh, was. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're walking around Toys R Us. Like, when are we going to get this kid? It wasn't even Toys R Us. No, I was no, saying Toys R Us just in case your brother listens to this so he doesn't find out we buy stuff at Dwayne Reed. Oh, well, it was Dwayne Reed. <laughs> we were buying the card. That's the thing. Oh, we were buying the card. We were buying the card, and and, yeah. and, and we happened to pass the clearance section. Okay. And Dwayne Reed. And there was a Walking Dead figure sitting there. One and it the, was the girl. The girl. One of the girls. Random. Yeah. Yeah. Just random. Like the only one sitting there. And we thought, wouldn't this be hilarious? <laughs> she wanted Walking Dead to get it for her. And it was like the little G.I. Joe sized one. You know? Yeah. The okay. little tiny. You know, it's like nothing crazy. It was, it was like, on okay. clearance uh, for like three uh, bucks. Uh, yeah, it was like four three, four dollars. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, you know what? You know what? They're going to laugh. She didn't care less. Nope. She got it. And this was not a week earlier. She said yeah. she wanted Walking Dead for her birthday. Yeah. We got it for her. By the time she got it, didn't even matter to her anymore. She had already moved on from Daddy Likes Walking Dead and I Want Walking Dead for my birthday. That is no. ancient history. As ancient. Far as we, that was not a, not even a week earlier no. did she say that. And it's already over with. Yeah. I, I kids, don't. kids just, you, you have no well, idea. The thing One is, week to another. Yeah. With the, the thing is with the cars, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you're into, like what you're watching on TV or something yeah. like that. Cars like, are... The cars yeah. are pretty, you know, like Universal. Star Wars. There are Star Wars themed cars. Yes. So you can get a C three. Whatever yep. he's into, you can find a car to match. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you get a R two D two. You yeah. know, something like that. Um, I have you know. the Universal Monster cars. Yeah. Yeah. I have those. See, I got. I would like. Like I had gotten Angelina all of the Star Wars books before the movie came out because I said by the time it comes out, she's gonna like it. So if I get her the stuff now, she could feel like a geek and say, I knew this before it came out. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was reading that before the movie. I was doing it before that. And now she really likes it. She still hasn't seen the movies, but she loves the well, books. It, my, my nephew has just seen episode seven. Yeah, she loves about, the books. You know, three or four times. And mm-hmm. he loves that. Yeah. He doesn't have any idea what this universe is. No. Mm-hmm. No. But it's visually stunning. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, it's everything you could want. It's like space and it's pretty looking and there's creatures and there's robots and... Yeah. Okay, cool. Listen, I, I really enjoyed episode seven, you know? You know, I don't know if it was like episode four. It was. I think it was pretty much the same damn movie all over again. But with a girl this time, which I liked. Yeah. That's, you know... I'm looking forward to Rogue One. I mean, if anything, and its looking... sequel. <laughs> yes, and its sequel, uh. <laughs> which I think I'll watch before I watch Rogue One. You like to spoil I think it that's, for that's, yourself. That's the way I go. want spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so yeah, cannibals. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. talking about uh, Star Wars. We should be talking about um, today's topic, which. Oh. We've introduced, but we haven't gone any further. Well, you wanted to introduce something nice before we got into something meaty. Meaty. (laughs) Meaty. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of jokes you can do with cannibalism. There is. There is. Tastes like chicken. I don't know. Everything tastes like chicken. Everything (laughs) tastes like chicken. Yeah. I don't know if human meat tastes like chicken, but... From what I read from my research, no. It tastes like pork. Oh, oh! Which is the long pig, or veal? Veal is is it's similar to veal in consistency. Yummy. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about this um, closer to Thanksgiving. Uh, we did it last year for last year, the week after the, last year, the year before with Mario likes movies. We did cannibal films. I really think the whole topic of cannibals around Thanksgiving is just funny. Yeah. Well, you know? yeah, because it's everybody's eating. Yeah, exactly. So we did the cannibal films, and uh, unfortunately, due to uh, health issues on both of our uh, both of our parts, which we're just not even going to get into. We're alive. We're here. That's all that matters. Correct. Um, 
health issues on both our parts, we couldn't get together last week to do the cannibal episode. We did the Native American episode, which we thought was really nice to do something about the Native American uh, history, you know, considering that there's... um. Considering everything that we took from them? Yeah, and, and, and we're apparently trying to take from them. Still taking Yeah, we're from taking them. more, and yeah. people are protesting and being... There. It's 20-something degrees out there, and they're, fire, and they're shooting them with water hoses. Yeah, did you see that twit? Uh, uh, I, there's a lot of twits going on. Around. Yeah, the, that, but that specific twit, Tommy Lauren, you know, uh, um, who was bad mouthing. No. Good grief! Watch that segment. All I'm right. not going to, uh, you know, yeah. get into it now. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Um, but uh, let's yeah, let's keep it light yeah. and, and fat free for the day. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go again there you go again um, so to get into the meat of our subject for the day and again we did the Native American thing now we're gonna and we did the cannibal films last week now we'll do actual cannibals ooh cannibals uh, another reason I wanted to do this about uh, cannibals is because there is actually a tale a, a, the, in history it is historically fact. It's historical fact. The pilgrims were cannibals. What? That's interesting. Wow. Yes. The pilgrims were cannibals. Uh, among many other people in history, the, can- the, 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 pin- the pilgrims. And Now, were, they pil- were the pilgrims cannibals for a reason? Yes. Yeah. Survival? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we're going to get into the reasons for Because I thought we were going to that. What was that Masters of Horror episode? The Washingtonians. The Washingtonians. No, no. no. Did you ever see? Oh, you should see it. It's Masters of Horror, that show that's on yeah, all show, those years yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah. They did one with the Washington, Washington, the Washingtonians. Washingtonians. And it was literally, what if our forefathers were actually cannibals? Yeah. And it's, it, yeah, basically, we have a group of, a group of rich elite people excuse me who get together every year for christmas or think believe it's christmas or something like that and they are the um they are but like the one percent they're of- not the descendants but they are descendants i think one of them is a descendant of but basically washington and all the founding fathers were member were members of a secret sect that eight people that ate that were cannibals wasn't that an episode of tales from the crypt uh it might have been as well, but it was definitely Masters of Horror. No. That when they pulled out the wooden teeth and they were like, human bits were found on his teeth or yeah. something. I don't remember now. It was pretty cool. It was cool. Yeah. So uh, today we will talk about cannibals and cannibalism in lots of juicy, tasty oh, good grief. things. Tidbits. <laughs> <laughs> lots of juicy tales. Of, of tender morsels. Yes. <laughs> right after the break on Channel X. So, uh, two clowns are eating a cannibal, and one turns to the other clown and says, I think we're doing this joke wrong. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's... Because usually, you know, yeah, cannibal, no, 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 no. Yeah, cannibals no. eating the clown says it tastes funny. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now the clowns are eating the cannibal. We're doing this joke wrong. Right. And um, <laughs> What did the cannibal do after he ju- dumped his girlfriend? Uh, Wiped his ass. Uh, I figured it was something along those lines. Yeah. So, all right. Bad jokes aside, uh-huh, there's a cannibal evaluation test. Is there really? Mm-hmm. Where, where really? What is the cannibal evaluation test? Well, let's see. This is a fun subject. I'm sorry. It can be. We're gonna make it. 
it's going to be until fun. you're at the table with cannibals and you're not the cannibal. Well, what are the chances of that? Happening? Okay, cannibal evaluation test, guys. Uh-huh. We're going to do this live. All right, live cannibal evaluation test. How old are you? Choices are I'm under 18, 18 to 24, 25 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 55, or even 55 and older. Well, officially we all fall into 31 to 40. How Let's does that, that feel? Then. Okay. How does that feel? I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> do you exercise? Options yeah. are I do heavy workouts all the time. I frequently do light work, toning workout. I occasionally do some exercise, but not as frequently as I ought to. Or I only exercise when I have to, rarely, in other words. I'm going to go with the toning, because that's, yeah. Yeah, Well, I haven't been doing anything for the past year because of uh, my medical problems. But before that, Oh, cry me a river. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Before that, before that, I was working out heavily. Okay. Well, I'm going to go with the high light toning, then. Balances out those two answers. Uh-huh. Um, how would you describe your body type? I'm very thin. You can see my ribs. I'd say I'm willowy. What does that mean? Willowy? <laughs> I'm sort of slim, I suppose. About average, whatever that is. I carry a few extra pounds in fat. Yes, I'm definitely overweight. I'm obese. A real lard ass. few extra pounds. Yeah, I would say the same. Do you have any sort of... Illness or condition such as cancer, organ disease, or diabetes? No. Not anymore. Well, he had cancer. Well, sort of. I don't he know. He had a tumor. He didn't have I, cancer. I, I didn't have cancer. I had a tumor. It was a tumor. Okay, well. It was yeah. a benign tumor. Well, then, no is the answer. Yes. Do you smoke or take drugs? I smoke. Well, no I, drugs. Think, I think <laughs> over uh, just about everybody here. So, I guess we're going to go with I smoke, but no drugs. Uh-huh. Okay. Do you drink alcohol? Uh Oh, yes, as often as I can, more than I should, but no heavy drinking. I enjoy the odd tipple. More than I should? More than I should. Especially around you people? Yeah, well, I'm just going to say no and and hang my head in shame. Mm. (laughs) Do you eat spicy or strong flavored food or drink coffee? I drink coffee. I definitely drink coffee. Yeah, me too. I drink coffee too. And I got the spicy food. Regularly and often. Uh, We'll go with mail because two out of the three of us are... Personal hygiene, do you wash it daily, more than once a week, but not daily? About weekly or so, or when I need to, less than weekly? I wash every day. Yeah. That's good to know. Uh, does your work or daily schedule mean you are exposed to mainly fresh air, recycled but clean air, fumes and dust, chemicals and strong odors? Uh, I, well, you know, well, you know um, I, I'm somewhere between fresh and recycled. I'm all recycled because I'm. You're in in an office. office. Yeah. I'm somewhere in the middle because half my day is spent here and I have the windows open, and the other half of my day is spent in the supermarket with the air conditioning on. So we'll say recycled but clean. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Eric Eric doesn't get an option in this. Yeah, I don't get an option. I'm at home all the time now, and. um, His air is full of um, dog hair. And and I take the dogs out, in which case I get fresh air, but. Sure. Sure. Close enough. Okay, we're going to go with recycled but clean. If you had to choose the part of your body you are most proud of, would it be your face or smile, your arms, your chest or boobs, your belly, your bottom, your legs, nothing, I hate everything. Nothing, I hate everything. Yeah, pretty much the same. (laughs) I'll leave my boobs out of this then. We've all stated I have a face for radio. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's basically the consensus here. Your result for the cannibal evaluation test. You are the main meal. Oh. Just what you are just what cannibals are looking for. How good do you look with an apple in your mouth? Nom nom nom. So this is we we be eating. We're all gonna be eating. Yeah, we're all gonna be eating. That's great. Good to know. Good to know. Well. (laughs) We're the main meal. We are the main meal. Uh, Well, we should all hit the gym (laughs) and, you know, do some cardio. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's okay. basically what it comes down to. Well, yeah. So we can outrun the other one. Yeah. That's it. Not to run, outrun them, just have to outrun you. Well, I And mean, if I can't, I, <laughs> I'll just trip you. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can think of somebody I can outrun already. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Couple. Couple of people, yeah. you know. So, I mean, I've got that going for me. Well, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm down to a 14 and a half minute mile. Yes. 
All right. I don't think I can do that. Running. I was proud. You just need to outrun one person. <laughs> and it has to be somebody that's bigger than you, maybe leftovers. And I can do that already. Yeah. So we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're plan good. of attack is settled on. Running yeah. our lives. Yeah. And trip whoever is behind us or close to us. And not feel bad about it. Nope. Which I've got settled. I'm going to take a little quote from my, my new favorite podcast. Stay sexy and don't get murdered. It could be changed. Stay sexy and don't get eaten. Well, let's get into our discussion for the day. Uh, the, one of the main reasons I want to talk about this is because, as I said, the pilgrims were cannibals. And we just had Thanksgiving. And we just had Thanksgiving. So, a gluttonous holiday. A very gluttonous holiday. So I want to um, I want to tell the tale of the pilgrims becoming cannibals and how we know they were cannibals. Yes. How do we know Proceed. that they were cannibals? Well, let me spin the tale. The human consumption of human flesh is as whole as mankind. Evidence survives from the prehistoric and more recent societies across the world, but there was, in 1607, novelty in the word cannibal, and novelty added to the frisium for the thousands of readers of travelers' tales sitting in comfort back home. Contemporary writers who knew their market applied the term broadly, vaguely, and quite often for effect. Although Columbus refers to cannibales, predatory tribes living on the islands of the West Indies, the word unequivocally takes on its modern meaning in the mid-16th century. Cannibal derives from a Spanish version of a Carib term meaning strong men. In the earliest records, it is applied to intractable peoples encountered throughout the New World, those who resist the overtures of European traders and settlers. In the United States, Americans commonly trace the Thanksgiving holiday stories to a 1621 celebration at the Plymouth Plantation. According to national myth, it was here that the Plymouth settlers held a harvest feast after a successful growing season, but the holiday was documented as being in practice as early as 1607, including in Jamestown, Virginia, as early as 1610 or before. The writings of George Percy, youngest son of the 8th Earl of Northumberland and a prominent member of the original band of Jamestown settlers, offer an insight into the mindset of those early colonists. Like every other man in Jamestown, Percy had come across tales of cannibalism in the Americas. On the outward voyage, he repeated what he had heard about the natives of Dominica in the West Indies, that they would eat their enemies when they kill them or stranger if they take them would lap up man's spittle while one spits in their mouths in a barbarous fashion like dogs. These people, Percy wrote, and the rest of the islands from the West Indies and Brazil are called by the names of cannibals and will eat man's flesh. But newly discovered human bones of a 14-year-old girl proves the first permanent English settlers in North America turned to cannibalism over the cruel winter of 1609 to 1610. Scientists found unusual cuts consistent with butchering for meat on human bones dumped in a rubbish pit. The four-century-old skull and tibia of a teenage girl in James Fort, Virginia, were excavated from the dump last year. Smithsonian researchers believe the dead child became food for a community struggling to survive the harsh winter, known to historians as the Starving Time. There were numerous chops and cuts, chops to the forehead, chops to the back of the skull, and also a puncture to the left side of the head that was used to essentially pry off that side, Dr. Osley said. The purpose was to extract the brain. The marks also indicate that the tongue and facial tissue were removed. The clear intent was to remove the facial tissue and the brain for consumption, he said. These people were in dire circumstances, so any flesh that was available would have been used. Smithsonian forensic anthropologist Douglas Owsley said hundreds of colonists died during the period. Scientists have said the settlers likely arrived during the worst drought in 800 years, bringing a severe famine for the 6,000 people who lived at Jamestown between 1607 and 1625. Written documents had previously suggested the desperate colonists resorted to cannibalism, but the discovery of the 14-year-old girl's bones offers the first scientific proof. The early historical record is chilling, 
Early Jamestown colonist George Percy wrote of a world of miseries that included digging up corpses from their graves to eat when there was nothing else. Nothing was spared to maintain life, he wrote. Very few settlers would have survived on these shores without the advice of Native Americans, which they had previously no interest in dialoguing with. Long before they began begging for the help described in the Thanksgiving myth, many colonists turned to murder and cannibalism of the indigenous Native Americans. The Algonquin tribes of Virginia's Native Americans, the Powhatans, were friendly, but this didn't spare all of them from being devoured by the colonists. The colonists also drove away wildlife by overhunting and could not farm land that wasn't prime for horticulture. Many of them had no knowledge of such things, having arrived at these shores for ideological and economic reasons by way of the British nations, like Holland and the Netherlands, which they had already fled to, after finding that their religious takeover of Britain was not going as planned. George Percy wrote, So great was our famine that a savage we slew and buried, the poorer sort took him up again and eat him, and so did diverse one another, boiled and stewed with roots and herbs. The cause of starvation was want of providence, industry, and government, and not the barrenness and defect of the country, as is generally supposed. A world of miseries ensued, as the sequel will express unto you, in so much that some to satisfy their hunger have robbed the store for which I caused them to be executed. Then, having fed upon our horses and other beasts, as long as they lasted, we were glad to make shift with vermin, as dogs, cats, rats, and mice, all was fish that came to net and satisfy cruel hunger, as to eat boots, shoes, or any other level leather some could come by. And those being spent and devoured, some were enforced to search the woods and to feed upon serpents and snakes and to dig the earth for wild and unknown roots, where many of our men were cut of and slain by the savages. And now famine beginning to look ghastly and pale in every face, that nothing was spared to maintain life and to do those things which seem incredible and to dig up dead corpses out of graves and to eat them. And some have licked up the blood which hath fallen their weak fellows. If we truly consider the diversity of miseries and mutinies and famishments which have attended upon discoveries and plantations in this our modern times, we shall not find our plantation in Virginia to have suffered alone. The Spaniards' plantation in the River of Plate and the Straits of Meglin suffered in so much that having eaten up all their horses to sustain themselves with all mutinies did arise and grow amongst them, for which the general Diego Mendoza caused some of them to be executed, extremity of hunger enforcing others secretly in the night to cut down their dead fellows from the gallows and to bury them in their hungry bowels. This is... A disturbing they yeah story that's really gross to hear <laughs> and honestly you know they're just you know they were a disturbed group yeah and they they had a hard time but they, the face and the tongue and the brain everything every bit of meat and that was the little girl but, right, but I'm like, how much could you really get off a face? Anything. Anything they could eat. They dug up bodies. Well, I mean, that's that's where I would go to first, honestly. What? Dead bodies. Why would you do that? That's horrible. I'd rather, think, I'd rather they're eat already something de- that's dead than them they're already to kill de- Oh, no, no, they're... They're, 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 they're like way decomposed. That's true. Yeah, I mean, that's just a good way to get sick. Yeah. Yeah. All right? That's true. But this is why it, they, the Native Americans moved around. they didn't stay in this is what was absolutely just well it was beyond it wasn't even just that see as it says in there they actually did not know how to farm properly we're talking english lords these are rich these aren't these aren't farmers no they're not these were not farmers these were rich people who wanted to 
basically practice their fucking religion or whatever. They wanted their own land. They wanted to get away and not have to pay British taxes. Right. They wanted their own place. <clears throat> they got here and the land, which was obvious, which was honestly, as they said, not ripe for proper horticulture. It was yeah. difficult to live on the land there. And they didn't have any idea how to grow food. I just feel like that was like a really big thing to miss. Like that's a big miss. Well, that's it. You should have picked up a farmer well, a on farmer the way too, out. Right? Well, well, you know what? What are we going on about right now? About millennials that they don't know how to do shit for themselves. Well, that's it. You know yeah. what? These, they, don't, they don't. This is nothing new is yeah. the point. That's human behavior. It's, it's evident in this right here. These people up and left their country just went out into the world, went out, went out and hopped in a fucking ship and kept going until they found somewhere and then realized we don't actually know what we're doing. And they, uh, their boat landed in the Northeast, yeah. which a, a, a good percentage of is bedrock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And if they had landed in, you know, the uh, south. further South, they would be, yeah. you know, more fertile land. Yeah. All right. Um, and as it said, there's probably that they, when they landed, it was one of the worst droughts in 800 years. So the little bit that they could do, they still couldn't do. Right. Which is yeah. why we get the story of them asking the, asking the natives for help. But before that, right. they were eating each other and they were eating other tribes. Yeah. They were actually hunting down natives and killing and eating them. Right. Which is probably adds to why the fuck they didn't want to help them in the first place. Oh, amen. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. They actually hunted down a specific tribe because I guess that's what was right where they were. They killed and ate them. Even amongst themselves, criminals were hung from a tree. Right. Right. When the person was dead, they the cut them down and ate plate. them. Sick and disturbing. And, yeah. and this is years, this is before Columbus. This isn't even Columbus we're talking about. This is the pilgrims. This is before that. Yeah, well, Columbus had a whole... Was 1692? Yeah, well, right? he 1492, was... 1492? sailed the ocean blue. I thought it was 1692. Whatever, 1492. Yeah, you No, know, you're right. You're right. Okay, I always I get see. that. I always get that fucking wrong. Um, he just didn't stay here. He landed, and then he was like, fuck this place. No, he went back for like more... Columbus was farther he, south. He landed farther south. He was farther he south. He went back I to get pilgrims, reinforcements. I thought the pilgrims were first. And then he got lost no. and he wound up in India. See, that's where I'm wrong. I always that's, thought the pilgrims uh, were first. Columbus, which is why I get confused because one was 1600s, yeah. one was 1400s. Columbus went back and, you know, he said, uh, this is a new land. It's not India. You know, it's, it's yeah. but it's, there's Indians there. Um, the first time was like, you know, he, he went back and he, he came back with corn and they're like, well, where's the gold? He's like, well, this is the, the riches of the land. They're like, but where the fuck where is, is the, the gold? gold? Where's the fucking gold? All right. What are we going to do with this shit? We have food. We don't need this. We, All right. Where we are the gold. spices? That's corn. It, corn doesn't taste like anything. Okay. I think corn is delicious. Yeah, but when it be, if, it's not, <laughs> if it's not corn bread, if it's not corn nuts, it's just corn. I love and it. there's not even butter on it. It's not even salt on it. It's not even popcorn. <laughs> it's not where's even... the salt to go with this corn? Yes, where is the salt to go with this corn? Well, well they don't have that. Well, then get the fuck back over there. <laughs> All right, for, for those spices in India, okay? Um, that's what he was coming over They were for. looking for the spice, I got it. Yeah, they were going for the spices, they were going for the gold. The spice. Okay. Uh, and they that found... Neither spice, one of man. you are getting what I'm saying, but fine. The pumpkin spice, what? Are you making a Dune reference? I am. You know, spice is used in almost all of science fiction. Really? I don't know any other one that, that uses we're looking what for the spice. What was Han Solo hauling that he dumped for Jabba the Hutt? What was I don't he, know. What the fuck was he hauling? Spice. Was he really? Yeah. I never paid that much attention. <laughs> don't give a shit. Well, you, Jabba had to, you know, make that taste food taste good. He had to, he had to season the pizza. Pizza the hot. Pizza the hot. Oh boy. Anyway. Yes, uh Columbus came here, he went back over there and he told everybody And this is and this is why I get them confused. I always yeah, thought the he pilgrims told everybody for about, some reason I thought the pilgrims were first. I don't know why. I'm just um, stupid. But Well, the pilgrims came over here on what three no Columbus did the three boats. Yeah. 
Yeah, the pilgrims, they said there were 6,000 the settlers. 6,000 of them didn't come no, over didn't on one fucking Mayflower. boat. And the Mayflower was Plymouth Rock. Never mind. This is Plymouth Rock. No, it's Plymouth Rock. Yes, but this James. The Mayflower was one of. It's all the same. It's all. Yeah. It's all. It's all this big. They said it was in Plymouth. It was in. See, that's the thing. That's what they don't tell us in in grade school. Yeah. How did this? Yeah. What's Pilgrims the, came the over on the the the, the, Mayflower. the the Mayflower. They had set. They had dinner with the Indians. It was yeah. all happy and yeah. go lucky. And then we dumped yeah. the into the ocean. Meanwhile, there was that's separate groups of pilgrims. Yeah. There was a group of pilgrims that came over here and were cannibals. Yeah. That ate their own people, yeah. and the the actual Native Americans. Well, Eric, if you ever get back into teaching, I think that's where you need to start correcting. Fuck Common Core. Start telling them about cannibals. Oh, please. Do you know how quickly I'd be fired? <laughs> yeah, it's true. And it's besides the point. We don't teach it anymore. Oh, it's insensitive. No, we just don't teach history anymore. Oh. Because it's insensitive. Because we don't want to teach American history. It's insensitive. It's wrong. It's horrible. It's terrible. To be, you know, have pride in being an American and want to know American history, it's insensitive to other countries of the world. Yeah, this is why the millennials are, are um, they, they take no pride in their country. Or this is the last group of people that were taught history. And everybody else that's, you know, like in school right now, they didn't. So nobody knows in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue? No. See, I, you know no. where I know that from? Well, Saved by the Bell. Oh. Because that was Screech's, yeah. when they were well, they, was, they were trying to get to the locker, yeah. and he said, 1492, and then Screech goes, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I didn't that's, watch Saved by the Bell. That's how I know. So, wow. Okay. Saved by the Bell now has two. The 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and they did the first mannequin challenge. What? what? Do you remember the episode when all of a sudden Zach was like, hold a minute. That's every episode. And everybody just froze, yeah. Saved by the Bell started the mannequin challenge. It did. I saw it on Facebook. How did you get to this subject? The mannequin challenge for me was... Oh, God, really? <laughs> I found the ultimate one online the other night when it was a strip club, and I was just like, all right, that's it. I'm done. Uh, anyway, when? Columbus. Columbus. Uh, he was sailing here. He... It was blue. It was 1492. That's great. 1492. He, he gave them blankets and disease. All right, let's move on. I don't <laughs> care anymore about what Columbus had anything to do with anything. I don't care a shit. Yes, this is not a Columbus Day episode. <laughs> no, it's no. not. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. He had nothing to do with me or this country. Not a damn thing. You're going to get a whole lot of hate for that. You, I don't give a fuck. I'm just saying. That's fine. There's a lot of people. You can't mess with Christopher Columbus. Fuck Christopher Columbus. Whoa. No. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> no, I happen to agree with uh, Manny on this fuck one. Him. Fuck too, him. Me too, because I don't get that day off of work, so fuck it. Fuck him. Was that? I don't Where the fuck did he land? Cuba. <laughs> 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 Where the fuck? Look, the, where the hell did he act? Like geographically, where the hell did Columbus actually land? Where did Pocahontas fit into all this? She was in Jamestown, according to Disney. <laughs> She's the fourteen-year-old girl that they hate. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, Disney. Uh, uh, Jamestown went from cannibals to a massacre. What do you know? It's just the place. Um, probably the Wal- Waitling Islands in the Bahamas, and then, yeah. See, that's what I thought he the did. The Bahamas. He, the Bahamas. Uh-huh. It was some sort of tropical place. Well, Columbia with, is tropical. Yeah, well, you know, with white sandy beaches and blue well, Where is Columbia on the map in relation to that? Because that's where I was always under the impression. He landed in Columbia because he named it after himself. Columbia is more south than the Bahamas. I don't know. This is what I'm asking you. God, we're such Americans. Like, what? There's this map thing? There's a map that tells you where everything (sighs) is. (laughs) Obviously, I didn't study it. Listen, I start talking about Mimmel and people think I'm crazy. What? Mimmel, the man who lives in the middle of our country. Minnesota, Illinois, Missouri. Arkansas, Louisiana. I I don't care. Oh. Fine then. If what you're saying is true, then I still don't care. Okay, that's where the Bahamas are. Yeah. That's Colombia. Yeah. Okay. So what are we getting all upset about this Columbus Day bit? 
I don't know. I have no idea. Because we don't need to give him any kind of credit also no. whatsoever. No. All right. We don't no. need to worry about having the day off. Yeah. We don't need the day off. I don't understand yeah, either. What? <laughs> she wants the, the day, day off. off. We can easily just take the day. Just off. take the day off. Listen, I don't understand it either. He it landed could be in the Columbus Bahamas. Day. It could be National Pizza Day. If I get the day off, that's all that it matters. It would be more beneficial if, if it, it was pizza na- day. If it was Pizza Day. National Pizza Day. I'll Technically, take it. it should be Pizza Day because he's Italian. I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I, I, I don't understand it either. I've never understood why. I don't we understand have this, Taco Tuesdays. He's, he I don't landed. understand why we have pizza on Friday and we don't have any Fridays off. I have pizza on Fridays because my parents had pizza on Fridays. And the little child in me says, it's Friday. I must have pizza. Make it a blockbuster night and a border night, too. Remember really? that Blockbuster and Taco Bell crossover thing? You bu- you would go to Blockbuster, you could rent, and then you can. Get, or you go to Taco, oh. you go to Taco Bell, you got get a meal, and they give you a coupon for a free, for one free rental at Blockbuster. Yeah, Make it a Blockbuster night and a border night too. You remember those commercials? No. Fuck. But I, I Blockbuster was over here, and Taco Bell was over in fucking New Hyde Park. Not here. I had one right there and one right there. Yeah, I know. But oh, I can't help I didn't it. have it. I, the, it was it several matter? miles apart. But you still had the commercials. Apparently they were I on, missed well, you know, You know when you missed them? Because they were on during Saved by the Bell. Okay. My sister watched Saved by the Bell. I didn't watch Saved by the Bell. I like Saved by the Bell. It was all about Kelly. Kelly Kapowski. Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Kelly Kapowski. Yes. Her, I, I See, way back, then, way back when, it was Kelly Kapowski versus Kelly Bundy. And back then, hey, Kelly Bundy oh, won. You know, Kelly Bundy was... Kelly Bundy won. But now, Kelly Kapowski. Holy hell. Is, um, she's still on? Television? Tiffany Amber Thiessen? Yeah. She was on, she was on white, white, was it white collar? Yeah, white collar. Yeah. For years. Oh, right, okay. Gorgeous. Yeah, all right. Gorgeous. So he never landed anywhere in America. He landed in the Bahamas, he landed uh-huh. in Haiti, and he landed in the Dominican Republic. Uh-huh. He landed in South America. Yeah. I don't understand why we celebrate yeah, Columbus Day in this country. And I don't he understand. never stepped foot. And I don't understand why we got all, we, we've been getting all upset about the political correctness. I don't bit. get it either. He killed, he killed all, yes, yes, sure. He massacred in native, native, native South Americans. Yes. Not here. It not had here. nothing to do with us. No. He did not take this land from anyone. No. He took, it, he took other land from other people. Why in this country we get so upset over Columbus, I don't know. He didn't land here. No, he He's didn't. not fucking here. The pilgrims came here. And not only did they come here, they ate the motherfuckers that were here. Correct. Get upset at them. Actually, well, he created the story of the cannibals. He... Came home, went home, and told everybody they were a bunch of cannibals. Yes, in South in South America. Yeah, yes, South but America. we're we're talking about is the literal diaries. Oh yeah, what I just read is the literal diary of, a, of the pilgrims of right. a settler in Jamestown. This is his personal diary. This isn't something that went through that you know. And there is and there physically found evidence of a girl from the town who was eaten, who was killed and eaten. And they ate Cut her up. face. They ate everything. That's well, they a, ate everything. Yeah, they ate yeah, everything. But, of but hers. we're talking about like the evidence on the face. I was like, how desperate do you have to be? Like, there's nothing here. There's like, I don't even know. Well, I mean, if you've got the puffy cheeks and everything like that, I mean, we don't know what the state of maybe this girl they was. fattened her up. I don't know. Maybe they. Who knows? The point is, this has nothing to do with Columbus. So. Back to what you were saying, why we get upset over Columbus in this country, I have no idea. Because if I mean, somebody honestly, knows, please tell us. Yeah, I mean, if because it rhymes so good. Well, yeah. Well, you know what? Still, I I see it all the time online these days. People are getting upset about you know the Columbus Day taken away, taking this away, taking that away. Fuck you! Don't get upset about Columbus. He didn't even get to America. Take the goddamn hun- ho- ho- take the holiday away. Fine, take it away. But not because he was a f- he was a prick, but because he has nothing to do with this country. He, he has, has nothing he to do with this. Literally, has nothing to do with the country. Now the pilgrims. He discovered. He apparently informed the rest of the world that, that this land, land here. was here. Yeah. Um, but he had nothing else to do. That was the end of his involvement. And it was apparently South American corn that he brought back. Yeah. 
It wasn't even North American corn. He probably right. didn't even bring corn back. They just lied. I, you know what? I honestly, that could be one of the more accurate bits of the story, but fine. Fuck I, I just don't know. Like, you know. fucked if we know. Fuck if I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's I mean, all I, very I, we more likely you bring me. a coconut or like something other than corn back. I don't know. It, honestly, I, it, it's all very confusing to me. And with the pilgrims eating people. Including the Native Americans. Including Native Americans. All right. What did it say? The Poetons, I think the name was? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, it makes wow. me wonder <laughs> what took place at the actual, you know, <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner, because I sure as shit don't think that they were splitting a turkey with the people who were trying to eat them. <laughs> this is the bird of our people. No, this is the... the this is my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> this is my neighbor's daughter. All right. This I've is known my, her my since she it was. It turns a, out Turkey was actually a very popular name in one tribe. Yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> this is my son, Turkey. Good. Put him on the table. Yeah. <laughs> this is my daughter, Turkey. Good. <laughs> Fry her up. Put it's, her in the tin can. <laughs> deep fry her ass. Deep fry her ass. <laughs> All right. Try deep smoking fried this one. This is my grandmother. Deep fried a turkey. Turkey. <laughs> Let's put her on the smoker. How are her giblets? <laughs> what do they taste like? Oh my god, uh, we're getting nowhere. <laughs> we really aren't. We're getting nowhere. But we are bashing American history. <laughs> we are just flat out stomping on Columbus because he didn't come to America. Yeah. And we are bashing the pilgrims. Because apparently they everybody's uh, they ancestors, ate everybody they turkey ate everybody turkey that were named turkey <laughs> and they, they people and, named and, turkey. And, and we named the bird turkey in the history books and you know it's turkey now because we are in covering honor, up in honor of the memory of no no oh no my God. we're covering up we're covering up. The fact that everybody was named Turkey. What if human human meat actually? T- <laughs> you just got that. Okay, no, <laughs> we've got a country named Turkey. So wait, now now <laughs> that calls into question the whole thing I said about cannibals taste, saying that it tasted like pork. It tastes like, it pork. Tastes like turkey now. <laughs> That's how the turkey was named a turkey. There's a lot of things in this world that I question. The fact that there's <laughs> and we turkey. Just, and we just discovered a whole new, whole new thing for him to question. All right? The fact that a bird is named turkey and a country is named turkey. You got to ask yourself a question. No. I, I, what I, came first? The turkey the, or the turkey? The turkey. <laughs> or my grandmother. Turkey. Or my grandmother, turkey. <laughs> so historically... Let's get into some of the more fun. The pilgrims were just... Oh, God. <laughs> the pilgrims were just assholes that were starving. We never argued that. Yeah. The turkeys were just assholes. That's the it. The turkey were assholes. The turkeys <laughs> The turkeys were just assholes. The pilgrims were assholes. <laughs> the just the people assholes eat people. eating assholes. Assholes. Oh. Eating assholes. How we get through anything. <laughs> I have. We, we, apparently, we, we don't get through it very easily. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, um, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> There's uh, other forms of uh, or other there, stories. There are of yes, cannibalism. yes. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> this this really didn't go the way Manny wanted. <laughs> it really didn't. Not one bit. <laughs> Manny's like, I'm going to start a podcast. and We're going to talk about creepy, fucked up shit, and I'm going to bring my idiotic wife and my friend with his brain tumor on, and uh, I think this is going to go well. And see where this goes. <laughs> see where this goes. It oh. did not go the way I planned. <laughs> it just didn't go that way. So Jamestown is a clear-cut example of survival cannibalism. Yes, that is one type of cannibalism, survival. <laughs> yes, and it, it, there was a, there's been a lot of movies about this. Uh, one that comes to mind is... Um, Alive. Alive, with, mm-hmm. uh, which is based on the true story of... Um, what is it? The um, Uruguay rugby team. Yeah. And they were flying and their plane crashed in the... Um, Andes. In the Andes. And they were cold there. 
Yes. And they didn't have any wood. No. They didn't have anything but chocolate and wine, which sounds fun, but it yes. only lasted about like a minute. <laughs> it only lasted that much, and they had a lot of dead bodies. Yeah. Lots and lots of dead bodies. And that was another form of survival, cannibalism. Because I don't know about the pilgrims eating all of those bodies. I think they just were lazy and um, they ate everything. Yeah. And they didn't really... They did not plan well. No, they didn't save anything. I believe the the uh, the uh, rugby team um, thought about it a little bit more. Yeah, they actually built... Um, a, 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 they used the wreckage of the plane to build something that would catch water and then they would refill all the wine bottles and bottles that they had on the plane to, and they and then they rationed things out. Yes, because they didn't want to be a bunch of barbarians eating their friends. It, they felt bad about it and they did it smart. Yep. Okay, whereas the pilgrims just sort of, you know, were... Assholes? Yes. <laughs> uh, then you have... Um, the other form of cannibalism, which is... Um, a learned cannibalism. That's part of uh, different tribes. Is that what you're talking about? Is that what you're thinking about? The, uh, you know, uh, possessing the spirit. So what you're talking about is actually, according to my research, two different kinds of cannibalism. There's exo and endo. Endo is actually within your own tribe. So that's the people who actually will, will cannibalize their dead as a way of either keeping a family member with them. Right. And EXO is um what person they, that's with the outside pilgrims of it. did. Yeah. Yeah, well <laughs> but um I, I it's just done in a different way. I mean the pilgrims were it wasn't religious at all. No. No, they were just doing it for the meat. They just wanted the food. Yeah. Yeah. Just sheer survival. <clears throat> Yeah. What we're talking about is it, it, it's more taking on, like you'll eat somebody's medicine man's brain yeah. so you can absorb the knowledge. Yes, and he's a willing participant. He knows he's dying and he's, eat my brain, yeah. take my power, and uh, letting the um, person take over as you know, a medicine man or you know, the chief or what have you, um, eating the heart, eating the brain, you know, um, what have you, uh, whatever, what, any part of the body, hmm? really just possessing the spirit because everything is internal. <clears throat> but you know, it's pretty much uh, universal that um, somebody believes that somebody is there's something is inside yeah. of them that you know goes someplace yeah. else. I thought I made a list of all the body parts and what <clears throat> they meant, but I can't find it. So yeah. I guess I didn't. Yeah, well, there's different body parts. I mean, um, the Native Americans. Um, chopped up the bison and took it on as a ceremony. And if they did do cannibalism, they believe that, you know, heart was this, brain was this, yeah. fat yeah. was this, bone was this. Okay, they took the, took the different parts of the body and used it for different things. Okay. Um, they, they, um, with ground. the bone, they ground up the bone and um, put they it on. They it like Coke. Well, no, they did not story. Like that. <laughs> that sounds like, like an instant aneurysm. Like yeah, they've well, got one I little mean, shard of bone. Just yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's sharp. Sharp. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, it smells like marrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. They ground up the bone and they would uh, put it on... Uh, put it on yeah. their pizza. It's it was like that. corpse paint for real. <laughs> Come on, I need to get this out. I need to get this out. Um, they ground it up and they put it on their body. You know, um, so they were more metal than metal. They were metal before metal was metal. That's right. Like corpse, corpse paint. paint. Oh, Christ. <laughs> you know, that's kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked up. Considering that. How many people on 9-11 were wearing bone fragments instead of oh, dust? Oh, a lot. Instead of dust. Yeah, oh, a lot. Like, there was just pulverized bone on your body. Yeah. You had the physical parts of burned up people on you. Yeah, that was... Instead um, of just concrete dust, it was actually partially people. They were inhaling parts of people. Basically, that was cannibalism, a form of cannibalism. Everybody who was there for 9-11 was a cannibal. Was an un, unwilling cannibal. Yeah. Un, unaware. Unwilling. 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 Unw
Now we'll get not, hate mail. And, and now we'll get some hate mail. <laughs> now we'll get some hate mail. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, but that was... Yeah, you know, we might, we might, we might was, lose a lot of listeners or gain a whole <laughs> bunch of new ones from this. You know, thing. it's like, yes, we just said that, but you understand that that's it's, accurate. It's fact, yeah. It's actually fact. It's a fact that there is... Possibly a, a lot of unwilling yep. forms of cannibalism because of that type of stuff. Yep. So wait, does that mean everybody like in New York City because it probably went into some of our water? Yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. we are drinking the dead. Huh. I mean, I think if you live in a city with all of the population yeah. close together, we we all consume certain things that we should think about all the construction projects across the city at the at the time that the dust settled into the concrete yeah and the basins that were already built and in the subways and literally there are bone there there is pulverized powdered bone covered all over new york city i'm so glad i work downtown now yeah think about the guy that fell into a hot dog machine and got his arm you know Blended with all How do you this stuff. fall into oh oh you mean at the factory? Yeah. yeah at the See, factory. I pictured a guy falling into the hot dog vendor's <laughs> vat of water. Oh no, no, How no. How the hell I'm, do I'm you all, fall I'm, into that I'm, sort of I'm thing? I'm trying to get you know, I'm trying to steer off of uh -huh. Well, I mean, that. there's 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 terrifying things in our food. I mean, really, the FDA has an amount of, of rat droppings that we are that allowed is, to consume. You're allowed to have a certain yes. certain percentage of rat shit that is like allowed I said to earlier, be in the food. I, I said earlier with, uh, with, with, with whatever we were talking about, check, people checking their feces for fiber, you know, you've got too much free fucking time. Unfortunately, though, cannibalism is not the most healthy form, the whole healthy thing to keep you alive. It is not. I've read that. There is something really cool, and I thought I found this to be hilarious, <laughs> absolutely hilarious. If you have any vegetarian or vegan friends, cut them out of your life immediately. Get rid of them. Just you don't fucking need them. You okay. don't need them. All right. Don't we know vegetarians? We know many. plenty, and we don't need them anymore. No, because when shit hits the fan, they are useless to us. They are going to be useless. Now we always now we always make this joke, and you've made it. I've made it. Where well, when it comes down to it, where society turns to cannibalism, is, well, we'll just eat the vegetarians first. No, that's not. you say we'll eat them first because fuck, they're going to starve to death. We're at cannibalism. We're we're we're, in, we're because the truth is, we we get to cannibalism. They can't eat us anyway. They physically can't digest So we anymore. win by default. So we win by default. So number one, you win by right, default. Right, right. Okay? But then they get their revenge. There is a, a condition called rabbit starvation. Also known as protein poisoning. Yes. As a, ve as, as a vegetarian, you are lacking, you are lacking certain proteins in your body. Now, those proteins may not be necessary for your survival, to create them, whatever, nonetheless. If the world turns into cannibalism, do not eat your vegetarian friends. The fact that they are vegetarian, they are missing certain proteins in their meat that are vital for you, and you can still starve to death while eating a vegetarian. Oh, Christ. It is called rabbit starvation. And essentially, it's, it's that because rabbit is like one of the leanest meats. Yes. So you can actually, you know, if you try to live off rabbits only. You would die. You would die because you're, you're missing certain nutrition and protein. Which is why you got to put a little squirrel in your Yeah, you got a little <laughs> yeah. squirrel in there. So Chipmunk or two. raccoon. Right. You know, unfortunately, you, get, you may have to eat your dog. Don't live on the rabbit. Yes, there are certain things friend. that are missing from a vegetarian's body that would be essential for you who trying to survive. So you could eat all the vegetarians you want. You will still starve to death if that is your source of food. Right. And it's even worse when you, when you, when, yeah, because I did some research into that specifically. And, and for our <clears throat> Ur Uruguay rugby team who's yes. in the mountains, in the cold. Your metabolism increases mm -hmm. because it's burning so much to keep your body warm. Right. So essentially, they're eating all these things. They're not getting what they need, and they're still starving. Yeah. 
They're well, not isn't even that special. <laughs> yeah. And on beyond beyond just that, there are multiple different ways that cannibalism will kill you. Mm-hmm. Multiple different ways. There are different uh, uh, different diseases you can get. Specifically, kuru poisoning. Uh, kuru, right? Kuru virus. poisoning. The kuru virus. Yeah. Um, it's a prion disease. That is specifically the disease you get from eating human brain, similar to encephalitis. Isn't it like mad cow? Yes, it causes a swelling of your own brain, and it creates and it gives you behavior like mad cow. So that's awesome. what you get from awesome. eating. And and as we know, mad cow, uh, what the cows get it from being fed other cows. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Human mad cow disease is kuru. So when you eat the brains of another human being, you will most likely get this and um, go crazy and die. What do you think of that? I think Hannibal should have ended differently. <laughs> it should have been. should have ended completely <laughs> differently. It should have ended totally differently. Um, and there's another one. Yeah. Uh, Leash Nehan syndrome. Uh-huh. This is is one it's, that will, one of the symptoms is that you are driven to eat yourself. Auto cannibalism. Yes. But this is actually a syndrome that they found. It happens mostly in men. Women are just kind of carriers. Oh, wait, before we go, did, did you name all three, all four versions of cannibalism, all four types? No, not. Let's just like name them. Let's list. name them off all at once. Okay. okay. You have. Um, survival cannibalism, which yep. is basically eating to survive. Hmm? You know, you have no choice but to eat another person. That yep. is all that's left. Learned cannibalism, Learned cannibalism or ritualistic. Which is tribal. Yep. Which is your, the, the tribe eats, the people around you, this is what you eat. You, and that's two different learned. kinds that we talked about. Endo, yes. which is within your own tribe, and exo, yep. which is which other is tribes. Which is external tribes, yes. But those are both learned cannibalism. You are raised to eat human flesh. Mm-hmm. Third, third, which I was just touching on now, is auto cannibalism, which auto is can- eating of oneself. Yes, or of pieces oneself. of oneself. Mm-hmm. Which and, and another part of that is forced auto cannibalism, where mm-hmm. somebody forces you to eat yourself. Yes, which actually has happened in the past. And the fourth, uh, pathological, is pathological. Serial killers mostly. Yes, yes, it is the social disease. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Jeffrey Dahmer was a pathological cannibal. Oh. Okay. Yeah, in case you were wondering. He was he was just a nutty fruit cake. You know, he was he's <laughs> he has to be one of the most interesting <clears throat> recent like serial killers. He really is. You know, mm. he's one of. Excuse me. Yeah, you can go on to that. You'll get on to him in a minute. I'm sure you're dying to get on to that one. But um do you know that Jeffrey Dahmer when he went to prison the other inmates were afraid of him first off. They were scared to death of him. They didn't. Yeah. Nobody wanted to be near him. Nobody wanted to be in his. But I think that's, that's part of the big thing of society is just like fucking cannibal. And it's like yes. you're not even like you weren't starving. You were. You yeah. chose to eat another person. Yeah. There's something really fucked up. And he was beaten to death in prison, right? Yeah, I think he was so. beaten to death. Like a bunch of inmates got together and beat him to death with bats or something like that. And the and guards I'm let sure it happen. They didn't feel I'm, the least bit bad about. No, it. Oh. no, no. The guards let it happen. Oh yeah, the guards let it happen. Um. They were so afraid of him. People were so scared of Jeffrey Dahmer. He was handcuffed and shackled throughout his entire autopsy. <laughs> no joke. <clears throat> yeah. He was shackled to the table during his autopsy. He was fucking because, dead. But he was and also they still had him See, handcuffed. but here's the thing. See that see, but there's a reason for that. He had actually attempted three separate times to escape the prison via the morgue he was a um he was a practi- he was a heavy practicer of i believe yoga yeah some something meditation. like that some sort of meditation where he could slow his heartbeat down to the point where he was declared dead and then he woke up in the morgue wow yeah so he almost escaped by faking his own death multiple times. But the process of getting out of the prison, getting the dead body out of the prison obviously took longer than he planned. But as far as I know, he attempted this three times. 
So when they actually performed the autopsy, they had him shackled throughout the entire thing because they were convinced he was going to wake up. (laughs) Can you imagine being the type of person that strikes that level of fear into other people? That this doctor is cutting you open. He is slicing you. He's taking your organs out and putting them in bags and weighing them. And he's still keeping you shackled. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine being that type of person? No. That's power. That that's is, pure that power. Is, that's, that's powerful. <laughs> but by far, by far, let's give, 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 the woman, give the woman a moment to have her O face right now. By far, the most fucked up of all the cannibals... This man takes the fucking cake. You're smiling. Just go. Just, just, I'm leading into Richard Chase, this vampire of Sacramento. Richard Trenton Chase. I've never heard this. No, not many people have. We, we discovered this guy somehow. I forget what the hell we were doing. Bizarre Magazine. Bizarre Magazine. Oh, that's right. It was Bizarre Magazine. This is about 10 years ago. They had an article on him. Richard Trenton Chase. So she, what was he? He was schizophrenic. Yeah. Yes, there's different levels of crazy. He is. No. No. Let's get into. Okay, he's called the, the, the vampire of Sacramento because he drank his victim's blood and cannibal, cannibalized their remains. He believed he was a vampire. He believed, Not well, really. no, no. He believed that the blood in his body was drying up. Yes. And he had to replenish it by drinking the blood of others. Okay. But this, is, this started when he became, was a teenager, uh, around the time of, of his teenage years. He began to think his heart would stop beating occasionally. Yeah. And that someone stole his pulmonary artery. <laughs> they stole it. They stole it. Okay. Like I said. He's he's a new level of crazy. His, his first method, his pulmonary artery has been taken out of his body. Been taken stolen. out of his body. Um, he really believed, for example, by holding oranges to his head, <laughs> he could absorb what? the vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> he could absorb the vitamin C from an orange <sighs> by, by holding it up against his forehead. <laughs> He also believed that his cranial bones were becoming separated and shaved his head so he yeah. could watch them move He could watch his head split open. <laughs> how, we, how, we, how do you tell this story with a straight face? We did. We obviously don't. <laughs> obviously we don't. I mean, he's just... He's, he's, meh, he's clearly disturbed. Clearly. He's out of his, absolutely he out, of his mind. out of his gourd. And he, he came up and he was born in 1950. Um, so in his 20s, he's around 1970. And it was kind of in that like weird phase of parenting where it was like, uh, you know, the 50s were like, you're, okay, you're supposed to be like a perfect housewife. And by the 70s where it's like, no, be free, find yourself. Yeah, you free know? love, yeah. Free love. And, and, you know, he was clearly disturbed. He did get institutionalized pretty often. I think his um, first when he was like 16, his mother had him yeah. locked up. His mother and him had a very volatile relationship. So oftentimes she would take him to the hospital and um, they would, you know, they diagnosed him as a schizophrenic. Um, took a couple of times before they finally got that diagnosis. Um, but every time she would go back into the hospital after he'd been there for a while and she would take him out against doctor's care, against doctor's recommendations, bring him home. And he was just fucking weird, clearly. He was a weird freaking guy. And he would eventually weird her out and her and her husband would go and get an, him, a, him an apartment and he would just go live by himself. Yep. Like a week or two after after being hospitalized, mom takes him out because she missed him. And then mom realizes he's fucking crazy. He's and she wants mind. to get him away from her and puts him up his own, in his own apartment. So so what are the, some of the things he did after? Because that, um, we, we need to get into that. Okay. Because he well, doesn't sound very... He sounds like just a neglectful mom. Sa- yeah, he sounds seriously unstable. Yeah, he, sounds no, like he, he, he really clearly became... had mental mental issues. And proof. And they were made worse when he was on his own. He was, he was very into LSD and marijuana and alcohol, which when you're... 
combining these things with yeah, schizophrenia and, 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 is and, never a good combination. And his mother probably was on all of that shit as well. <laughs> um, once alone in his apartments, he would he began to capture, kill, and disembowel various animals, which he would then devour raw, sometimes mi- mixing the raw organs in with Coca-Cola in a blender and drinking the concoction. <laughs> the look on Eric's face just there. He went... What, what, wait, what? He believed that, investi- that ingesting these creatures would prevent his heart from shrinking. Oh. Um, one really great story is that one time his father came and visited him in his apartment, and, and Richard was looking quite ill, and he told his father he must have eaten a bad rabbit. Yeah. Apparently, there was a rabbit farm down, down the block from his apartment, and he would go like once, twice a day, pick up a rabbit, Slaughter the hell out of it, put it in his little blender, drink down the blood, and go back to the farm. Not even cook it? No. Oh. Savage. <laughs> in the hospital, after that incident, they eventually got to the point that the, the hospital, he, he had to admit that he was eating raw rabbit. Um, so his parents put him in the hospital again, and the hospital rabbit staff... Rabbit starvation. Yeah. <laughs> the hospital staff came into his room one day, and they found his blood, blood smeared all around his mouth. He apparently had been biting off the heads of the birds, drinking the blood, and throwing the carcasses out his window. Like squeezing Like a them juice box. And, yes. It's literally squeezing them like a juice box. You know, that's, I mean, honestly, <laughs> let me just go out and say that that was incredibly difficult to catch the bird, bite off the head, <laughs> and squeeze the... Catching like, the bird alone. Catching the bird alone is difficult enough. <laughs> but to do it more than once... Yeah. And nobody noticed until it, what, he had like a whole juice box of birds? <laughs> yes. No, no. <laughs> no. He was treating the birds like juice boxes. Like juice That's box. how they would well, describe... No, okay. a, a whole case of dead... Juice box birds. <laughs> Just sitting out his window, yeah. Yeah, go on. Okay. <laughs> There's more. Uh, another incident just before he he completely loses his shit. Uh, he was stopped by police. He's, no, wait a minute. Before he completely loses his shit? We're still in animals, my friend. This is a cannibal show. Uh, oh, yes, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> Before he completely loses his shit, there's loses. one more thing. There's one more thing. He didn't lose his shit already. They found him wandering a reservation in Nevada. His body was completely smeared with blood. There was a bucket of blood in, in his truck. And turns out there were parts of a cow along with this cow's blood. So unfortunately, that's not a crime. They couldn't actually arrest him for anything. I love the fact that he's doing all this, and the doctors keep letting him go. Yeah. Like, wow. No, that's that's I his mom that. keeps coming back but, for him. But the, I, I get that. But this is what I'm trying to say. He's doing all this, and they keep letting him. Well, it's, it's technically nothing illegal it's, it's about this. It's so. technically not illegal. We, we can't hold him. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's just a cow. <laughs> you can go to McDonald's and eat a cow. And he's smear it all eating these up. He's just eating it uncooked. Yeah. He just wants it. He, he, you know. he's, he, he ate a couple of pigeons. They're couple a nuisance of rabbits. anyway. <sighs> a nuisance. Rabbits. Rabbits. Rabbits, pigeons, cows, whatever. You know. Now he completely loses his shit. Okay, so December 29th, 1977. A 54, 51-year-old father uh, gets killed in a drive-by shooting. Uh, so that's his first kill. It's just a random shooting with a gun. Yep. Yeah, now he's got a gun. He's got a gun. He's got a gun Somebody now. gave this man a gun. Well, it was easier to obtain back in 1977. Yeah. He then began doing break, breaking and entering. He would re- enter somebody's home, pilfer through their belongings, and then defecate on their beds and clothing. His third victim, Teresa Wall- Wallen, uh, three months pregnant. He surprised her at her home, shot her Surprise! three times, <laughs> shot her three times, killing her using the same gun he killed his first victim on. He then raped her corpse, and while stabbing her several times with a butcher's knife, he removed multiple organs, cut off one of her nipples, and drank the blood. Before Wait leaving. a second. Wait a second. What did he do to the animal bodies? <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't illegal, so they never investigated. <laughs> you know, 
You have to See, wonder. realize, realize that up until up until this point, up until Mr. Hands in the in the, was that nineties, early two thousands, bestiality was not illegal. Hmm. Right. Remember, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hands is what made that illegal. So the seventies, they're not even looking for this sort of free thing. love, man. Free love. They're not even. They're not even investigating whether or not he fucked the cow. There wasn't even a consideration. Yeah, no, there was not. So he could have fucked the cow in seventeen different places all over the county, he and they never even checked. Milked them udders, and they never would have checked for it. Because it's there's nothing illegal about it, and here it was got- not even brought up at city council meeting. Nobody said, "Hey, uh, Joe last week touched my chicken and says that it, it it feels vaguely like a human being. Maybe we should do something about this." Nobody said anything like that at the point in time. Mister Hands probably saw Mister uh, uh, Chase on TV and said. I, I got, can get I, down with this guy. I could. I, I honestly. I got a party with this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know, he was it's only just, a child, and this was very. It's, it's very new to him. <laughs> so anyway, now I can get to this. January twenty seventh, he commits his final murders. He enters the home of thirty eight year old Evelyn Miroth, counters her friend David Danny, who he who he shot with his twenty two handgun. He then steals her wallet and car keys. He's doing all this with a twenty-two. That fucking pea shooter. He would literally walk down the street, ring the doorbell, and if you answered, he walked in and killed you. And took a dump on your bed. Yeah, wow. But that's literally what he would do. He walked down the street, ringing doorbells. Whoever was home, just park the door open, kill them, and eat them. He steals her her wallet and car keys, rampages through the house, fatally shoots her, her six-year-old son, Jason, and her 22-month-old nephew, David. He then engages engages in necrophilia and cannibalism with her corpse. Then a six-year-old girl who was friends with Jason and had a play date scheduled knocks on the door, (laughs) startling him. Uh, The worst timing in all of history. The worst timing. Like, if there was ever a moment for you to be late, (laughs) this would be it. But she scares him off. (laughs) He runs from the six-year-old girl and escapes. Uh, She alerts a neighbor. She um, apparently, apparently a a hellhound came out of her throat and chased him out of the house. He just killed four people in this house. Six-year-old shows up. (laughs) Oh, fuck, I gotta go. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god. Oh fuck. I'm caught. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you really have a way of stating things. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I wonder if she caught a mid coitus and he just he had to go finish somewhere. Oh gotta finish, gotta finish, gotta finish. So as he's running, he runs off with the twenty two year old nephew twenty twenty two month old nephew's body, and what happens to it? He takes the child, cracks its skull open like an egg, and drinks from it like a wine glass. Literally, just pours the blood down his gullet and drinks it. Literally cracked it open like an egg. He actually took the head, cracked it like onto the side of the crib or something, cracked it open, and then split it and drank. Did he have any spillage? I'm sure he had plenty. He likes to wear it as we've... Yeah. He well. likes to wear it. Dude, the osmosis. He he just... He absorbs it through his skin and it gets right into oh, the capillaries. He, he, and he, he absorbs its um, Along with essence. the vitamin C. Yes, along with the vitamin C. <coughs> from the oranges. <laughs> from the oranges. Oh my God. Could you God. see this fucking lunatic holding a dead baby How in one hand and an orange in another? He's got the orange up against his head and the baby in his lips <laughs> and a six-year-old walks in, catches him and he goes... Oh, fuck. (laughs) This is the situation. How does this this guy not have a movie? How does this guy not have a movie? Well, there was a made-for-TV movie in the 80s, but obviously this was the Uh, 80s. It was not historically accurate. No, apparently. I I don't know if it was or not, but apparently it was a made-for-TV movie, and that is the most that has ever come out of the, the, uh, 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 the Hollywood career of Richard Trent and Chase. But it gets better. 
Better than that? No. Than him being scared off by a six-year-old? But it it continues. Uh, He was uh, found guilty, um, even though his defense was trying to get him off for insanity. They didn't care how crazy he was. Jury didn't give a fuck. You're going away. (laughs) They said, fuck you. They gave him six counts of first-degree murder and sentenced him to die in the gas chamber. Uh Um, From prison, he granted a series of interviews with Robert Ressler, during which he spoke of his fears of Nazis and UFOs, claiming that although he had killed, it was not his fault. He had been forced to kill to keep himself alive. He asked Ressler to give him... Survival cannibalism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He asked Ressler to give him access to a radar gun with which he could apprehend the new Nazi UFOs so the Nazis could stand trial for the murders in his place. Fucking Nazis? It's always the Nazis. <laughs> Fucking it's Nazis. always the Nazis. He also handed Ressler a large amount of macaroni and cheese, which he had been hoarding in his pants pockets, believing the prison officials were in league with the Nazis and attempting to poison him with food. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Here, you want some of my mac and cheese? <laughs> I've been saving it. I, here, I, I, I can't pay you anything else. Here you go. <laughs> Could you imagine the look on this guy's face? I'm here for an interview, and this fucker pulls out a handful of mac and cheese. <laughs> here you go. It's for the Nazis. Oh, the Nazis. <laughs> this is to keep the Nazis from killing me. <laughs> what? <laughs> and on December 26, 1980, a guard <laughs> checking cells found him lying awkwardly in his bed, not breathing. An autopsy determined that he committed suicide with an overdose of prison doctor-prescribed antidepressants that he had saved, saved over for several weeks. Side note to that is his fellow prisoners on death row encouraged him to yeah, kill himself. They pushed him into it. They talked him into killing himself. Peer pressure. That yeah. Yes. They talked him in because they'd had enough of his shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't have enough of this guy's shit? The guy's- I, wanted, I wanted this guy to kill himself. <laughs> Look, buddy. Look, you're going to do all of us a big favor right now. Look. And they were also guys that were on death row. Yeah. And he. And he's the one that was like, too much. Dude, too dude, much. I'm going to die tomorrow, but dude, do I have to deal with you in the meantime? <laughs> Death row would be so much simpler if you weren't around. <laughs> oh, my God. So that is the story of the oh, vampire Richard Sacramento. Trenton Chase. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a funny fucking story. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I got to say it. I know people died and everything like that. <laughs> but holy, but fu- holy fucking shit. This guy was insane. That was a, a crazy, did I, crazy so, guy. Did it now live up to what I said at the beginning? That this guy is cream of the crop. <laughs> I don't think we can do anything else. <laughs> That's it. The show's that. over. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I mean, we went we from oranges and we, rabbits. I wanted, I wanted, to, yes, and, seriously, to, <laughs> <laughs> to mac and cheese Nazis, <laughs> UFO Nazis, mac and cheese UFO Nazis. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry, mac Look, and cheese UFO we missed, Nazis. I wanted to talk about the Donner Party. We didn't get to that. No, no, we didn't. I wanted, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, this guy that the the life of Pie Tiger was named after. Oh yeah, uh, Richard whatever. I wanted to give us a history of of choosing the straws. Well, apparently, we need choosing to do, the straws. Yeah, we need to do a part is, two. Is oh, cannibalism? Yeah. <laughs> Holy hell! Yeah, we're gonna have to do another part of this. Yeah, we're gonna have to come back and uh, we're gonna have to do part two of cannibals because son of a bitch, I need a break after that. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously need a break after Richard Chase. Oh. <laughs> well, all right. So, so, so we'll come back on another time, another time in the future. And we'll do some more cannibal stuff. But uh, 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 I think yeah. we've had enough. Yeah, I think, Richard I think, Chase, go on out there. I'm gonna go absorb some vitamin C out go, of my head. Yes, I'm gonna. I, I I would absorb some nicotine, but I left the cigarettes in the car, and uh, <laughs> I was. I, was I, I could just leave them in my pocket next listen, time. Listen, you got oranges, you got apples. Hold them up to your head. There you go. <laughs> you got potatoes? Oh, so that's going to do it this week. Uh, we're going to take you out with some Without You. I'm hunting them. I'm sure I'll pick some weird, little, randomly eerie, creepy song from him to uh, to play. Uh, check us out at MassGravePictures.com. Make sure to look up MacabreFairFilmFest.com. You will find us there January 13th at 8.30 p.m., the premiere of our new film, Theta States. 8.30 January, Friday the 13th in awesome. Ronkonkoma, New York. It is... Ten dollars 
to get in for the day. Tickets are $10 for the day. There's something like 50 films playing in just that day alone. So 10 bucks will get you entry to that along with the uh, along with us and our Q&A and the premiere of our new film, Theta States, Friday, January 13th. We're on Concoma, New York, MassgravePictures.com. Look it up, find us, follow us on iTunes and Stitcher and rate us and all that wonderful, yummy stuff. Tell us about your uh, orange juice adventures. <laughs> <sighs> Until the next time, good night and good luck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>